Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to this beautiful but rather dark winter hangar. The end of the light this time is not a train, but rather a beautiful light tank, the Leichter Kampfpanzer M41, aka the German Walker Bulldog. Why it is worth reviewing this video, why I think that this is probably the best addition to the German tech tree in over a year, and why it has a higher battle rating than the original Walker Bulldog at 6.0 rather than 6.7 shall be explained in this video. The next thing is I think that this is one of the best tanks to go for and to actually use while you try to gain victories, kills, caps, etc. in the Operation Frost, I'll also try to explain. And you know what, without further ado, let's go right into the review, shall we? As usual, I want to begin with the armor and immediately we can see that the tank's best armor is 32mm on the lower glazes and while it is also nicely angled like the upper glazes, it doesn't really save you from anything. There are the armor shell interaction rules, there is heat effects, there is hash, there is APDS, there is just simply big shells that punch clean through. Um, the tank is nicely angled, overall it is more or less uh, even safe from heavy machine guns and it doesn't die to everything via hull break. It gets hull broken at times, uh, it feels like, but it doesn't really um, seem to be over fragile, let's say like the BMP-1. So let's have a look then at the interior and we can see that the tank is filled with ammunition everywhere. So the crew sits relatively high, so a single shot to the turret will do. There is also this uh, relatively modern looking ammo rack uh, right behind the front plating. Um, ammunition wise you can take out two thirds of the ammunition and you are most likely okay with it and you remove this big portion here right away. Power pack with the engine and the transmission is right in the back and yeah there are some places where the tank is empty and if somebody hits it with AP or APDS right here then uh, not that much damage gets caught by this tank so it is big and it is crammed full of ammunition but uh, in certain shots there also can be no damage received and without further ado let's go into the statistics let's begin with the statistics and let's begin to talk about the gun of the leichter kampfpanzer m41 it has the 76 mm m32 which is the joint lowest caliber with the t92 76 mm t 185e1 cannon we have overall 65 rounds of ammunition and we reload in 5.9 seconds which is very good but 0 0.0 slower than more or less the same gun on the t92 we'll come to this in just a moment but compared to the rest of the pack, we are having a really nice reload advantage of a quarter. Then the turret rotation speed is extremely snappy. With 36 degrees per second turret rotation speed, you are really good in close quarter combat. You are really great at reacting to situations. And yeah, again, you are even better by a third than the RE251 and the rest of the pack mostly. The gun depression, joint best in class, minus 10 degrees, plus, uh, minus 10 degrees, 20 degrees of gun elevation, only second to the Orwell 74 with its fantastic seven, uh, 27 uh, degrees of elevation. The elevation speed is um, yeah only 4 degrees per second, but that's okay. Only here the Type 62 and also the Orwell 74 are better with 10 degrees per second. So this is really nice handling, right? Now let's talk about the statistics of the mobility of the Leichter Kampfpanzer M41 and we can see when it comes to the engine it barely got a license for the German Autobahn with only 500 horsepower. Bad jokes aside, that's quite okay and we also have an okayish weight of 23.0 tons and that leads to an acceptable 21.7 horsepower per ton ratio. This is again only second to the RE251 and in this case also the Type 62 but compared to the rest of the pack it is fairly comparable. The top speed is also quite nice with 72 km per hour and this is again a bit slower than the RE251 with 80 and also the Orwell 74 with 100 km per hour top speed, the latter one being obviously a wheeled road car or armored car. The reverse speed on the other hand, um, it is 
better than most other tanks, but I have to say that minus 19 kilometers per hour just feels just a bit not good enough. Um, I would prefer minus 25, 30 kilometers per hour, but it's certainly better usable than the T92s and the Type 61s minus 8 kilometers per hour. We also have neutral steering. So the tank will not win a drag race or a top end speed race versus an RE251 or an Orwell 74, at least when it is on a paved road. And I think this is the good part about the Leichter Kampfpanzer M41, then it, that it is very able to deal with ridge lines. It is very good at repositioning, at reacting in close quarters. And the only missing thing that it has is a stabilizer. Other than this, it's pretty much perfect and only second to the premium RE251. Now let's talk about the ammunition and this is where all the good news come to an end, at least when we have to talk about the two stock shells. The first one is the M352 high explosive shell with 732 meters per second mass velocity and 12 millimeters of penetration. It might be okay versus some potato trucks, but versus other light tanks even, you sometimes struggle and I think when it comes to fighting uh, airplanes and also your occasional potato truck, I think the top mounted 50 caliber, to which I'll come in just a moment as well is just simply better so not really a great shell the second stock shell is the m319 shot apcr and that is a god awful shell the mass velocity is quite nice with 1234 meters per second and 206 millimeters of penetration are usable but it's extremely bad versus any sort of angled armor it also just simply disappears into the endless void of war thunder heaven um, because it sometimes you know it gets absorbed by some even the slightest pieces of metal it's extremely god awful what is even more god awful is that the third shell type comes as a tier 3 upgrade so it's a very very hefty long grind with this stock apcr it's god awful after you have suffered for quite a while, finally, as a tier 3 upgrade, you get the M331A2 shot. And this is the APDS round that you have been waiting for. 1231 meters per second and 232 millimeters of penetration are really nice. It also performs significantly more reliable and better versus angled armor than the stock APCR. And this, in fact, is the very same APDS round that you share with the T92 and also with the original M41 Walker Bulldog at 6.0, which was the very first APDS run ever to appear in War Thunder. It's good to shoot through solid objects and also at long range you can lead it quite nicely. But I have to be honest, the shell that I fired the most is the M496 Heat FS round. Mass velocity of 1082 meters per second, penetration of 254 millimeters and, uh, at any range and it has heat penetration normalization. So at uh, 60 degrees angles of attack it still goes through 120 seven millimeters of armor this is really nice you hull break lightly armored vehicles uh, you can penetrate a lot of tanks with these uh, most of the time where you shoot them anyway and it is again the same a, a heat fs round that you share with the t92 it's great however it's not as a powerhouse as the other light tanks heat fs rounds again the um, re251 has 320 millimeters of penetration and also a better mass velocity. So statistically we are now done with the Leichter Kampfpanzer M41 Walker Bulldog, uh, but I think a few more things have to be discussed here. First of all, the rich toolbox that this light tank brings to the table. Again, I have said this in probably all the videos that I've done lately on tanks, but uh, the tank brings even more to this. First of all, we have a top mounted 50 cal, which is always nice to deal with those pesky um, scorpions the m56 it also can be used to deal with the occasional potato truck it can threaten aircraft although its uh, elevation is limited to 20 degrees of elevation which i hope Gaijin uh, changes in the future on the other hand we have the combination of heat fs and apds uh, this was one of the points of criticism that the r251 has no solid shot at all and so here this tank uh, brings to its primary heat fs the secondary apds which you can use to shoot through bushes fences trees 
um, and everything else that you can shoot through with any sort of solid shot. So the tank has more flexibility right there. Then it can scout. It can help your teammates repairing faster. It has an artillery strike. It has really great mobility. And the gun handling with the turret traverse is also pretty nice. And one thing that um, is funny to highlight here, it has no gear shifting bug. So it accelerates down a hill quite nicely without the driver going insane with its uh, gear shifting operation. So why do I make such a fuss about light tanks, especially when they come into the German tech tree? Look, a lot of the German tanks at 6.7 are really nice. They removed the uh, Tiger II with the 105, the Panther II, and then also the premium Tiger II, the regular Tiger II H, and even, you know, some lower tier tanks or lower battle rating tanks that also have quite nice armor, such as the Ferdinand, the Jagdpanzer, and the Tiger II P. They are all pretty nice, okay? On the other hand, they have one significant downside. They have no flanking support and they die very easily, uh, mostly to a one-shot, when you can easily hit the ammo rack. And so this tank, the M41 Walker Bulldog, can help those teams to win the flanking battle. It can deliver intelligent data by scouting. It can suppress enemy advances. And so many tools, as I just said, are right there where you really need them the most. This is one big thumbs up from me, from for Gaijin, to introduce such a tank into the German tech tree as a um, tech tree vehicle and not a premium. On the other hand, it wouldn't be me if I would have not found a significant downside in this entire situation. This is an American post-war light tank in the German tech tree to support late World War II stuff versus other enemy or other nations post-war stuff. So this tank is very well suited for Operation Frost. It can kill, it can cap, it can win. And I think that this tank really is fun to play but it further dilutes the value of those World War II tanks, which is something that most people once upon a time began to play War Thunder for, right? And so, again, this tank adds just a touch of compression. On the other hand, it is not as much of a maniac tank as the RE251, again, because it's probably not a premium. And again, the addition of the Heat FS round is uh, the reason why it is not 6.0, but rather 6.7, a change that I kind of agree with. And so I think now let's talk about some gameplay scenes, right? So here I went behind enemy lines, as you could see, and I was just uh, finishing off certain targets that tried to rush me or that were just trying to go to the front line. And this is the strength of a light tank. And now I'm finishing a cap, which is really, really nice. And I refresh here my smog because you never know when you need them. This is one of those things I always want you to keep in mind. I tried to blind spot here this uh, enemy tank, but it was not to be. I have no idea what it actually is. And I'm curious if he actually comes around and tries to go for the cap. I look around and hello there. Who are you? And there you can see the very nice rotation speed and one heat shell in the back of the turret of a Vickers MBT. It was a neck shot and this T92 got now hull broken I guess. And uh, I thought that I'd be okay, I could push on and then I just didn't see that guy. I just didn't see this T34, he was hull down. Okay, next scene and this is also very nice. I'm here on this map and try to rush the middle because there is one position that is all so powerful and I want to share it with you and you can only get there most of the time with light tanks. Most of the time also only from this side. From the other side it's very difficult, it's not that reliable to get there but you'll see what I mean. This looks like suicide, like rushing forwards just mindlessly going in but no, there is a plan to the madness and um, as you can see I have the ridge line behind B in my mind because you can go there and you can use the very good gun handling 10 degrees of gun depression 30, 36 degrees of turret rotation speed the neutral steering the quick reload the powerful shells uh, the scouting artillery everything right 
So the tank is like literally made for this scene. So yes, first I try to um, fulfill my role and cap here. And the tank is really wide. So again, as I said, this is literally a tank that has the, uh, the hitting profile of a panther tank. It's huge for a light tank. There, I scout this guy. And yeah, my team reacts extremely quickly, really nicely. Love it. I hear some tanks more to my right side. I captured the point and now I reverse uphill. So the horsepower to ton ratio is good enough to get away with this. And then I also didn't see this tank pushing that aggressively forward. And he kills only my driver, not my gunner. And this allows me to return the favor. I jam his turret ring. Kill his gunner and his loader. This is nice. But before I can uh, reload, because my loader is gone as well, he uh, retreats behind the rocks. I scout him, and so now he has a little bit of pressure at his hands. So this allows my team to move up. This allows my team to get into position while I just deny the enemy team the advantageous positioning. So this is how you have to play a light tank when you try to support your team. I thought that this uh, M60 would uh, look at me, but uh, no. And so I kill him, which is really nice. The problem is, I can only do so much for my team, and uh, they drastically neglected the flanks. C and A are completely open, and I have to deal here with this ridge line. And I see that this scorpion is not paying attention at all. And uh, yeah, I kill him and go back. I scout the Hellcat before he can do anything, but he is completely curious where I was. He doesn't know. I drop an artillery strike, and this is where I get again greedy. Can I push my luck? The answer is yes. <laughs> this is really nice. And so if I could continue these for a very long time, you can imagine what kind of damage this tank can do to the enemy team. But it's not the only tank uh, that can do this. A lot of other nations tech trees are full of such tanks with powerful guns, good mobility, good gun handling, um, a rich toolbox, etc. But this tank is in the tech tree for quite some time when in fact it's the very first very usable light tank. The second one is the TAM and the TAM is hampered by the fact that you know its mobility is nothing super special when it comes to uh, oh, oh that was that was typical Gaijin. The heat shell detonating the tree but still continuing its way to detonate the Hellcat. Oh Gaijin never change. Oh yeah please change. So he scouted, and again, his cannon breach is knocked out. I figure that I have no idea where this T-92 is. And I'm just looking what killed here this AMX-30. I'm curious, where is he? Where was he? The problem was, I didn't look behind me in time. I think about dealing here with this Vickers MBT or scouting him again. And just before I see the T-92, I get killed from the M56 from the other side of the flank. So that was rough, but you could see the, the sheer lethality of such a tank and the impact on the gameplay. So this has been the review on the Leichter Kampfpanzer M41 Walker Bulldog and I love it. I think that this is the best addition into the German tech tree. I'm kind of in love with it. It's very capable, not just objectively, but also subjectively. I had a, f a lot of fun in it. It was probably the greatest time at 6.7 within the German tech tree before the madness occurred a few years ago. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this tank, how you play with it, against it, and if you feel the support of such light tanks if you are a Tiger 2 driver. As usual, give this video a like if it did, subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see each other on the ways, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.